All right, guys, the goal today is get the heater channels welded in, hopefully. We got a few things to clean up first. Let's do it. There it is. Window wiper mechanism. It's pretty rusty. All right, guys, let's get all that old rusty metal cleaned up all the way around the edge so we can get the heater channels welded in. Let's do it. All right, guys, we are just grinding, wire wheeling, sanding, doing everything we can to knock off a lot of this old rust and rubber all the way around the car. It's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time, but it really kind of helps you get down to the good metal and see if it's something we can save. We might actually be able to save this side, believe it or not. We might be able to put a little patch in here and Put a little patch here and here. This side's fairly solid compared to the other one. This is the passenger side. It is a lot worse. Um, you can see underneath here, it's all rusted out. And the back part is even worse. So this side might, uh, we might need to replace this side. I actually picked up the piece for this. I already kind of knew we needed to replaced this one, so I went ahead and ordered the part. It's from Wolfsburg West, and this is the right side rear bumper mount. It looks very similar. Uh, the cut and everything look almost identical. So before I do any cutting, I'm gonna do like I did on the other side, wire wheel it really, really good, both sides, clean it really good with rust inhibitor, and then we will determine if it makes sense to replace it. All right, guys, we spent some time pressure washing the whole car inside and out, just getting a bunch of loose rust and dirt that was down in these crevices out of here. 
so we can kind of have a fresh start and a fresh look after spending hours wire wheeling all the loose rust and dirt and stuff that was in here kind of gives you a new perspective of how bad everything is <laughs> the other reason i wanted to do it is because i had sprayed a bunch of free all on all the moving parts and it was greasy in here i wanted to get all that grease out so there was no grease in here when we put down the paint and the uh, rust inhibitor so it's just baking out here in the sun getting all the final moisture out of it i blew it out really good all right guys let's spray some osfo down in here we're just gonna let this soak overnight and it's gonna kill that rust this stuff's kind of nasty don't breathe it in try not to get on your skin All right, guys, we got the shop all put away. Beetle is undergoing its osphyl treatment. So we'll check back in the morning for you. It'll be just a second. All right, guys, it's the next morning. You can see the osphyl has been working. Any of these areas where the rust has turned black is what you want. I'm gonna rinse all this out. You can see it's kind of sticky up here. And in here, there's puddles of it. All right, guys, we're gonna get the body back outside, rinse it out really good, let it dry. And while it's drying, we're gonna paint the inside of the heater channel. guys got all the osso off while it's drying out here in the sun let's go paint the inside of the heater channels Okay, we're gonna spray the inside of these heater channels because there are some areas that aren't covered with the primer, like this one. You can see the bare metal in there. So we wanna protect the inside. Classic Fab does a pretty good job of covering the inside for the most part. You can see they did a pretty good job spraying all up in there, but we're gonna spray a little more. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use this Eastwood setup. And what you do is just put the cap on like that, I guess, and it starts to come through. I went ahead and shook the can really good. Let's see. Huh, that's weird. Just had to shake it up really good and kind of prime it. It's working now. Let's do it. You can kind of see how it works. Oh, shoot. All right, guys, I gotta get two hands on this. It's a little messy, but we're getting it. It's working.
probably be better protected than the uh, original was. It's messy. Shoot, should put gloves on. Pretty good. All right, a little messy, but I think we got up in there pretty good. Oh yeah. Pretty good guys. All right, I'll save a little for the firewall area. So we've got some protection in there. That should help those last another 100 years probably. <laughs> All right guys, another mic F tip here. Let's run some brake clean through this thing, see if you can. But you can, skip, you can get it down in here. And just uh, try to clean out the hose so you can use it again. All right, guys, the heater channels are all lubed up on the inside with some paint that should help protect them from rust. Let's get the heater channels back on the chassis, get the body in here, lower the body down on the chassis, and let's start getting these welded in. Everything's bolted back up, nice and snug. The bolts are all on both sides, nice and tight. Let's get the body back in here and lower it down on the chassis. All right, guys, the body's been sitting outside drying in the sun. It's super dry now. And you can see where the OSFO was. I've rinsed, I rinsed it off really good because some of the OSFO was still wet and sticky. I just wanted to get it out of here. I'm kind of glad I did. I'm not sure if you're supposed to rinse off the OSFO when you're done with it. Like, uh, I thought I saw that somewhere, I'm not sure. Um, if you guys know, comment below. But let's get this inside, let's get it back on the chassis and get those heater channels welded in. We gotta get the stand off. It's four 19 millimeter bolts. Two in the front, two in the back.
There we go. All right, let's get the body under it. All right, we got our new bushings and bolts here, lower bushings and upper bushings. We're gonna lower it down, fit it into place, put the nuts, bolts, and bushings on. Whoa, Nelly. Wrong way, girl. Sit on the chassis like that. Woo. The body is back on the chassis again. It's gonna have to come back off a couple times, but we're getting there. It's a process. So that really lined up really nice. And uh, I'm gonna put the bolts on where you can see the body and the bolts lined up. We're lined up here. And we're lined up here. So we just gotta get the bolts in there, close the doors, close. And what we're gonna do is find a couple spots where we can tack in the heater channel, adjust the doors and try to get the doors fitted. It's gonna be a process. We're gonna have to adjust the doors multiple times, but we need to get a starting point and then go from there. Man, I love the way it looks on that chassis. It's so cool. I'm gonna get the bolts on. New cushion, body mount from Wolfsburg West. This is the upper one, there's a lower one. There's ones in the rear too. New bolts and washers, and then this is the original plate. Washer plate, I guess you call it. I'm not sure what they call it, but let's put these in. They're 17 millimeter. All right, guys, check it out. Body is on the chassis again. And the goal now is to get these heater channels welded to the body, or at least temporarily tacked in. Once we get them tacked in, we're gonna remove the doors and we're gonna pull the body back off the chassis and finish all the metal work that needs to be done around the heater channels. So the goal right now, get them temporarily tacked in and I also want to make sure the doors are opening and closing before we take them off. Let's do it. All right, so right now you can see the doors are closed, but when you open them, they kind of drop down and uh, they don't close. So we need to fix that or at least find the sweet spot so that we can close them, open and close them. Once we do that, we're going to tack heater channels in a couple places and hopefully it'll hold that position. All right guys, check this out. So the door, so the body is resting on the chassis 
and we have it bolted down. But you can see this door won't close. You have to lift up on it. And that's because the heater channel is not welded to the body like it should be. If we lift it up right here, it kind of puts the heater channel and the body a little more where they're supposed to be. Now the door doesn't really drop. And it shuts, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So we just need to, now we just need to weld the heater channel in a couple places where it is right now, and it should hold that position. Then we can take the doors off. So basically we just took the, the uh, jack here under the heater channel and lifted it up just a little bit so it kind of, you know, put some more weight on it. And now it opens and closes and you can see everything's lining up real nice. It opens real nice and you just, and it closes really nice. Check it out, it's so cool. So what we need to do, I think, is find a spot to weld that side somewhere in the front a couple different places and maybe a spot back here and these welds can be taken off later as we're replacing some of that rusty metal but just to hold it in place so we can get the doors off and get those braces off would be awesome and then we can start doing the metal work okay so where can we weld to kind of hold this position. We could probably put one there in the front on the outside here. There's nothing over here to tack to. Um, we could probably put one, a couple here. We can definitely put a couple up front there where it meets the firewall and one over here where it meets the pillar and one in the back here where it meets the B pillar. All right, I'm gonna leave it in that position with the jack and everything right where it is. And we'll go in through the passenger side. Passenger side's still dropping because it needs to be lifted up as well. So we'll work on the driver's side first. We'll get it tacked in. We'll come in here with the welder and we'll tack there, there, and there. A couple different places. And then hopefully that'll hold it in place and we'll do the same thing on the passenger side. All right guys, I just realized I forgot to sand the heater channels where we're gonna weld. We gotta sand some of that green primer off. Otherwise, we might not get a good connection with the welding. I'm gonna pull the body back off, sand a couple areas where we're gonna weld, and we'll put it back on and weld it down. It's gonna mark a couple of these areas real quick where we're gonna weld. You can kinda see right here, we need to be able to weld around this. So that needs to be bare metal behind there. Up to that point, basically. This I'm not worried about because that's all gonna be new metal added. This I'm not worried about because we're gonna be taking this out. But we do need a, a spot over here on the rear to weld to. And I won't be able to get under that right there. Same thing over there. gonna weld we need to clean this spot off here try to weld this we'll sand that down same up here Cool. You can kind of see now we need to grind this green primer off of here so we can have a clean surface to attach to. Same up here, over there, over there. Let's do it.
All right, I think we're ready. I put a little weld through primer on the front and left the rear areas bare because we're gonna do a lot of work around these areas and we're gonna be grinding some more. But the front area, we shouldn't need to do any more work up there, hopefully. All right, let's lower it back down and hopefully get that first weld in. Let's try it. We've got it back into place, bolted down. We've got the sweet spot back where it was, so the door opens and closes nice. Let's go inside and put in our first weld. First weld on the heater channels. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going in. See what happens. All right, guys, check it out. That front area, we're gonna do some more work to it. Once we get the body back off the chassis, we'll have more access and we can get that really nice and cleaned up. We'll put a bunch of welds in there, grind it down, smooth it out, it'll look great. This is gonna be a temporary hold. We're just using the original A pillar here to temporarily hold this. So once we get the body back off the chassis, we're gonna replace these lower A pillars. But right now we're just tacking them in where we can so we can lift it back off the body, take the doors off, and we'll have more access to work on these different pieces individually. Like we can leave that welded in and then we can replace that whole front fender well area. Then we can replace this area and come back here and fix all this stuff. So it'll be a process but at all times, it will be connected in the front, it'll be connected in the rear, it'll be connected in the middle while we're working on the different sections. All right, let's get this area tacked in. The driver's side is temporarily welded in. Let's see if the door will hold its place when we lower the jack. Let's see if it's still working. Feels pretty good. Okay, now let's lower it. Hopefully it'll still do that when we lower it. Moment of truth. Oh, I think I felt it drop a little bit. Hey, not bad. It's still closing. There's still some, some room for adjustment. That A pillar is just tacked in a couple places, so we're gonna have a lot of work to do as far as getting that heater channel permanently installed with all the different patches. But that's a good sign. That is a good sign. That's awesome. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Same exact process, and then we're going to take the doors off. That way we can have access to the lower A pillar and the inner fender well and all this stuff. The doors have to come off. But at least we've got a good starting point as far as where they open and close. 
and they're temporarily tacked in. That's freaking cool. <laughs> I love that. That was a really big concern. I was very nervous about that. So, very happy. One of those things, if you've never done it before, you just, you know, you worry about it. Are you going to be able to get the doors to line up properly and close properly? And uh, so far, so good. I mean, the heater shanners are just tacked in there temporarily. We still got to take out this lower A pillar, put in the new one, and add a bunch of stuff. But it's basically where it needs to be right now. Based on this right here. And I don't even have to slam it. I can just close it real lightly. Check it out. That's pretty good. Opens and it, you know, there's a slight drop, but that's just be, just a very slight drop. Uh, and that could be the hinges are worn out. It could be that the fact that it's not even all the way in properly. And we'll have to keep checking it as we go. Once we get the pillar in, we're going to have to check it again. There's going to be a lot of work to do. This one's going to drop a lot. So let's see if we can find a sweet spot on this one. Get those tacked in, and then we can take the doors off. Let's do it. All right, guys. Hopefully, we can find the sweet spot on this one and do the same thing. Let's try it. Definitely see it going up. Let's start with that right there. Ooh, this one's rough, guys. <laughs> this one's really rough. What do we got going on here? Yeah. This door is really, really bad, guys. Really bad. The door has some serious issues. This is going to be a lot more of a challenge here. The problem with this one is the, uh, the door itself is really, really bad. So that's why we're having the issue here. Um, we might have to go, we might have to take a different approach on this one. All right, guys, this is what's going on with this side. This door is it's just so bad that it is buckling right here it's it's split here it's all buckled out here it's really really bad and what's happening is you can't get an accurate reading on it where that side's a lot more solid and we were able to get a better reading this side is really messed up so what we're going to do is take this door off and we're going to take the other door off and we're going to start doing all the metal work that we need to do. We're gonna replace this lower pillar here and we will just have to take a step at a step, step by step process until we figure out how to get this thing lined up. But there will be a few different points where we can kinda of get some reference and uh, it's gonna be a challenge. So let's get the doors off. All right guys, let's get the doors off. I already got this side loose. I sprayed uh, free all on it and hit this with the screwdriver. I hit it with the impact driver and I finally ended up having to use a, um, I used this tool that connects to an air hammer and I'll show you here in a minute. We were able to break all these loose and they were bad. The bottom was really bad. But it broke these loose after I beat on them for a while with this, with this screwdriver and with this thing and a sledgehammer, a bunch of free all. It was kicking my butt and then I found that attachment in my toolbox and I forgot it, that I had it. Hopefully these come all the way out. Oh, this door is really bad. I hope we can fix it. The little clip under here, I can't really see it, it's all disintegrated, but that little pin needs to come out. It holds that door on, it's a little latch. And then we're just working on getting these three Phillips out and getting these three out. Oh, 
There's a little clip on there. It's all rusted. There it goes. I can barely see it. And these, these lower ones are just rusted in the bag. It's hard to get a grip on them. I hit them with free all uh, the other day and I soaked them and I broke them loose with the air gun. But I've since pressure washed the car and probably rinsed all the free all off of it for the most part. So, And these are just super rusted. So the back end of the threads are probably Man, that free all works good. I'm stripping the head on these things. It's not good. Not good. All right, well, here's the tool I'm talking about. I'm going to get in here and try to knock these the rest of the way out. screws. I don't know if we have any of these. Look how rusty that thing is. That air gun works, man. I don't know who designed that little attachment, but that is cool. I got mine from Eastwood, but I'm sure somebody designed it. A great idea. Ah, I just wish I could get this bar out of the way and uh, get in there a little better. Ah. I actually went on the back side and sprayed some free all on the back side. I think that's helping too. Oh man. Whew. One more down here and we got one holding the whole thing up and I got a the seat kind of holding that the end of it over there. Come on, man. let's go. No. Oh. Man, I might have to get this brace out of my way. I can't get this in here and turn it at the same time. Guys, getting all this. Come on. I think we got it. Yes. Woo. We got it. We're gonna need some new screws, but we got it. Come off now. Ooh. Oh yeah. She 
is messed up. All right, the door is off. So, here's what we're looking at. It's, uh, it's bad. Really bad. I don't know if we're going to be able to save it. The bracket's up in here, but this is all loose. And the bracket's just kind of flopping around, so it's not able to get a an accurate reading on the, on the... Yeah, it's bad, guys. It's bad. I don't know if, if we're going to be able to save that door or not. We'll work on it, but I don't know. So you can see here, this is the lower A pillar and it is all rusted and nasty. Same thing on the driver's side. This side's worse, passenger side's worse. So I do have these replacement pieces and the idea is to cut up here somewhere and put in the new piece. Uh, but of course it's all connected. So it's gonna be a process. That's gonna be a challenge. For now, we got the door off. It's looking good. Let's get the driver's side door off and we're gonna call it a day. All right, we're gonna get the driver's side door off and we're probably gonna have to use that air tool to do it. I have not loosened this side yet, but I did spray it with free all the other day. I might put a little more free all on there and go ahead and knock these loose with that tool. Let's do it. All right, guys, you can see these are rusty and we're gonna knock them loose with this air gun. Check it out. We're gonna get that little clip off and there's two plastic covers that we got to get off. So you've got three Phillips heads on the top, three on the bottom. One of them is covered up with this little cover here. Original little cab. You can see how nice and clean this one is. It's been protected and how rusty those are. Same on the bottom. Oh, look how rusty that thing is. We're going to put a little free on in here. This free all. Guys, I'm telling you, this stuff works good. It works really good. So, I can't even see the heads on these. I'm going to have to hit them. I'm going to hit them with the hammer and this tip, and hopefully we'll knock that rust out of there and get the head back on it. We're gonna get that little clip off of there too. If you can see it. Look how bad those are. You can't even see the one on the left. It's just completely gone. Down at the bottom, wow. All right, I'm gonna get this little clip off first. I need a freaking magnifying glass to see it. Someone was saying, make sure you use your pads to kneel down on because it will mess your knees up. And these are great. You can get like a six pack or something for 20 bucks. They work great. This try to get the head back on this one, hopefully. Alright, doors are off. Man, what a lot of work. 
feels like sometimes you uh, take one step forward and two or three steps back sometimes, but it feels pretty good to have those heater channels in there. It felt really good to have that driver's side put in and be able to close and open the door like that. So that gives me hope for this side. I know what's going on with this side. This side's door, you know, the passenger door is just so bad. We're really going to have to dig into that and see if it's if it's going to be possible to repair this. Um, I'll have to check with Mike F and see if, if he's made a repair like this before and uh, see what he thinks. But it's pretty bad. Hopefully we can save it. We're going to do our best to do it and uh, clean up the driver's side. Driver's side door on the bottom is way better. So a lot to do, guys. A lot to do. I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride. And I hope you're enjoying the series. Please don't forget to comment below and uh, let me know what you're thinking. <laughs> ah. All right, guys. See you on the next one. Ooh. Wow. It's something else, boys. It is something else. See you guys. Check it out, I found the sweet spot. <laughs>